Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Helpful Lock Picker here, and the video I have for you today is going over the American Lock 5300 series padlock. I find this to be a very well-rounded padlock, and it is something that you may consider adding to your collection. It is just a really cool lock. As all American locks come, it comes with the typical American Lock core that comes pinned up to five pens, which can easily be expanded up to a sixth pen. Like all American locks, they come with serrated key pins, except for the shortest two key pin links, serrated driver pins, and serrated spools. They typically offer some really great pick resistance for those that are first starting out, and especially if you add in that sixth pin, this lock can become quite a formidable lock and can offer you a lot of great protection. It comes with an 8mm shackle, which isn't all that great all on its own, but when you couple that with the shrouded shackle protection, when this lock is properly installed, it can withstand a lot of different physical attacks and make this one really great lock. When you consider the size of this lock, it is very compact and it just offers you so much security. This is just a really cool lock to use. And on the inside of this lock, it comes with something very important. Years ago, American locks could easily be bypassed with a tool like this where you could just insert it and get to the actuator and operate it without interfacing with the lock whatsoever. What American Lock has learned to do is they have installed anti-bypass wafers which comes in this lock and it renders these tools ineffective. What I'd like to quickly do is show you why the anti-bypass wafer is such an important thing. When it's not installed, you can take your bypass tool, insert it down the keyway, and then you'll be able to reach the actuator in the back very easily, and then you'll be able to get the lock open without having to even pick the lock or use the key. So when you insert the anti-bypass wafer to the back of the lock, you can see that it precisely blocks the hole in the back here where the bypass tool will go through, and when it's installed in the lock, it will be held against the inside of the lock body and it will not go anywhere. So I'm going to hold it down with my hand. And now when I install the bypass tool, it's not going to be able to poke through this wafer because it is blocking it. So this tool is such a big security improvement because back in the day, before this tool existed, you could easily bypass most American locks in just a matter of seconds. And it did not matter that they were hard to pick because they could just simply be bypassed. So what I'm going to do now is show you an example of what it takes to get into this lock without using the key. We are going to see what it takes to open up this lock by single pin picking. I'm going to show you an example of this coming up in just a minute. Please stay tuned. Alright, so we got this lock loaded up in the vise. Let's see what it takes to get it open. So what I'm going to do is use top of the keyway tension in 50 thousandths, and I'm going to use a hook in 18 thousandths, and we're going to start off with pin 5 in the back. Okay, got a couple clicks off 5. Big click off 4, another click off 4, another click off 4, 3. Really only got one click off three. Small click on two. Small click on one, which gave me a little bit of movement on the core. Five, got another small click. Four, got another small click. Three, got another click. Nothing on two. Small click on one. So right now I haven't really felt anything other than serrated pens, but we will see once we get this lock open. Haven't gotten really much any feedback on pen 2 yet either. One, two, three, four binding up. Couple clicks. Five. Small click. One got a small click with a little movement on the core. Got some more movement on the core when I just set four.
It's going down the pen stack. Let's see if we can find a binding pen. One, two, three, four, possibly five. Gotta click on five. One, two, three, four binding up a little bit. Okay, now we got a good false set. So the still the only pen I haven't really picked is pen two. So that must be a spool. All the other ones felt like serrated pens, but let's see one, two, just touch that. So now we must be sitting right in the middle of the spool here, but let me go down all the pen stacks just to see one. Two's given counter for sure. Three, four, five. So pen two feels like the only one that's not picked. So let's see. Try not to drop everything as I lift this against the counter rotation. Such a big false set. One, two, three, four, five. Still feel good. So one, two. And we are now open. So this has been the American Lock 5300 series. This is a really cool lock. It puts up a pretty good fight, and all in all, this lock did have some decent bidding. That seven cut right on the front there really made it hard, and I did have to use a little bit of a deeper hook to get around that. And what I'm going to do now is let's get this lock taken apart so we can get a real good close-up of what's inside. So I'm just going to zoom out here for a minute. And we are going to get this lock taken apart. Thank you guys so much for checking out this lock. I just find this lock to be a really, really interesting and cool little pad lock. So let's see what we have to offer. My guess is that it's four serrated with a spool in number two. That is how it picked to me. This is a lock I bought on eBay, and I haven't had the chance to take it apart yet. So. Let's just see what's inside. The only thing I did do on this lock was take it apart to verify that it did have an anti-bypass wafer. So as you do with any other American lock, there's a Phillips head screw down here, and you just take that out and then you can get the lock core out. And as you can see, what just popped out the back here is the anti-bypass wafer. And now let's get this lock fully taken apart. Let's see. Get a paper towel here, wipe off some of this grease. All right, so as always with American locks, when you pick it, the actuator is gonna be on the opposite side of, you, of what you want for gutting. So I typically like to either use a shim or lock it back up and use the key so you can turn it in the opposite way. So I'm going to use the key because that will be easier for me. Then I'm going to take out the sir clip on the back here. Okay, so now that we have the sir clip off the back, what we're going to need to do is use our key because a lot of people, when they're first starting taking American locks apart, they don't seem to notice at first that you want this piece on the back here holding the pens in because when you pick it it's this way and they're just all going to shoot out so you can rectify that by using a shim but this is the easiest way for me so now let's take this lock apart and we'll see what is on the inside and another thing to note too when you are working on American locks is the fact that the front of the lock is the part that protrudes a little bit out here where the Bible is so, looking at the key pens, we'll see what we have, and I'll try to get a closer shot of this for you guys. All right, so, starting with key pen number one, that is a serrated key pen. Then we have 
Keep pin number two serrated, three serrated, four serrated, and five is one of the shorter key pens, so that one is not serrated. So you have to remember with American locks, the shortest two lengths on their key pens are not serrated because they are just too short to add them. And the serrations add a very important function to the lock. They make a concept called reverse picking a lot more difficult because they stay overset when you use that technique. And I've made a video on that before that I can link up on the top for you. So the plug just looks like a standard American lock plug. I'm not seeing anything that is different than what I would expect. So now let's take the pens out of the Bible here and we'll see what we have. Hopefully my analysis will be correct, but that is how the lock picked. This was a pretty hard lock to pick to get past that spool because it provided so much counter rotation you could drop everything. So the first pen here is going to be a serrated pen. And then we have a copper spring. The second pen, serrated spool with a copper spring. And then we're going to have a, let's see, another serrated pen with another copper spring. And four, we have a serrated pen with another copper spring. If it will come out, we'll tap that out after. And five. Oh, it just dropped. We have a serrated pen. And let's see if we can get these extra springs out. Okay, so we have two more of the copper springs. So this is a standard American lock, but what I really like about this one is it came with more serrated pens than spools. Serrated pens are what make these locks really difficult to get open. And the spool was placed right over one of the short pens. So if you, as you can see here, it was able to come fully into play, which is a really nice touch because you can see right here in two how that spool is able to sit recessed there and be able to be fully utilized. If you were to put the spool over a pen that was taller, it's possible that it would only be resting on this thicker part of the spool here and you would not be able to be able to have the spool come into play. So that is a really good thing that they were able to pin this lock in a way that makes sense. And then when you take a look at this lock on the inside here, you can see on the very inside where the actuator is, that is where this anti-bypass wafer sits. And I'll grab that for you right here. This bypass wafer plays a really, really valuable role in making this lock more secure because the bypass wafer will protect you from being able to have a tool like this go in through your lock and being able to just get through the back here and then essentially it goes through the inside. It will come out the back here and then you'll be able to hit the actuator and be able to open up the lock without having to pick it or do anything else. But either way guys, this has been the American Lock 5300 series pad lock. There was a little bit of a review on the lock and showing an example of picking it open. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. As always, thank you so much for checking out this video and I hope you all have a great day and just thank you so much for checking this out.